Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each program, we will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. Thanks for watching Griffin Update. I'm Mackenzie Bose. And I'm Morgan Doyle. Man, oh man, I cannot believe it's already our second to last show. I know, I cannot believe we only have one more show and then it's summer. Well, I am excited because in summer, some of my favorite things to do are go to bonfires and just relax to some music. It's just so nice when summer is here because you do not have to worry about anything and you just do good relax and relaxing is the best. Definitely, I agree. <laughs> I'm trying to get a lot of that relaxing in and I hope I can go to some concerts too. Well, there are a lot of concerts here in St. Joe. You know, a little closer to home. There's a new band popping up, though, that you might not know about. Reporter Sydney Durbin gives us an inside look at the St. Joseph Big Band. On the third Monday of every month, around 7 p.m., St. Joe Big Band gathers at their new home, Ground Round, to play a night of jazz music for anyone in attendance. People of all ages are encouraged to attend and listen as they enjoy their meal. The Big Band is led by Professor Bob Long, Director of Jazz Studies and Saxophone Studies at Missouri Western, Tim Thomas, and Kathleen Holman. Comprised of musicians of many ages and backgrounds, they blend together to keep the legacy of jazz music alive. I spoke with trumpet player and co-founder Tim Thomas about the goal of the St. Joe Big Band. The goal of the St. Joseph Big Band is kind of mostly a, a mentorship and an outreach program to younger students um, that want to learn how to play jazz. Um, and of course we play too and perform, but, but mostly we want to reach out to the younger generations and, and pass down the torch of learning how to read music, read jazz music, and, and learn the sound and play. I also spoke with Professor Bob Long about the history of the St. Joe Big Band and how it came to be. This group, as you see, has been going for about three and a half years now. Uh, as, as Kathleen explained to the audience earlier, this is a combination of two bands that used to run in the city years ago, the, the old St. Joe Kicks Band and then the Ray Auburn Big Band, which was a very popular band, dance band played in the area for many years, and Kathleen was part of that. Uh, and we brought the two books together, the two books have been sitting for several years, not being used, and somehow the books were given to us, and we put the two books together and, and resurrected what we call the St. Joe Big Band. The St. Joseph Big Band will play their next show on April 15th, starting at 7 p.m. Make sure to check them out. This is Sydney Durbin reporting for Griffin Media. You know, that looks like a really comfortable atmosphere. I might even end up there sometime before school gets over. Well, if you go, let me know, because I might tag along. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Now, to flip the switch a little, let's talk about an important person on campus. Well, everybody on campus is important, but who are you talking about? Well. Linda Oakleaf is making her presence known here on campus. Reporter Christian Sarna got the chance to catch up with her to see what she had to say. Dr. Linda Oakleaf is an assistant professor of recreation at Missouri Western. We sat down to talk about her journey, student organizations, and what makes Missouri Western great. When I try to explain to people what I do, what I tell them is that my students are the people who are in charge of fun. Ryan Hanley is a sophomore convergent journalism major at Missouri Western. He's the president of Griffin Trans Alliance, an organization Dr. Oakleaf is the faculty advisor of. She's like the most badass person I know, like just in general, like not even like professor wise, all of the stuff that she's been through and the fact that she just keeps on keeping on and like is so dedicated to like her students and her family and like the organization itself is like one of the most inspiring things because she's proof that like no matter what happens you can still persevere and be a badass while doing it. Last summer I had brain surgery. I had had a um, in 2005 when I was actually doing my master's degree I had a, a brain aneurysm, a subarachnoid hemorrhage um, and they fixed it but it wasn't all the way fixed so it had to be fixed again. So I needed to have brain surgery for it. Life is long and college is short. Go find your life. The folks in the Griffin Trans Alliance are really trying to make change, make change on campus and make change in the world. Um, and I don't think I've been as impressed with the group of students as I have the, the folks that are with the Griffin Trans Alliance. They do good work. The students are amazing. Like I, I really enjoy the students that I work with and I, I, really, I really appreciate doing it at Missouri Western. I would just say if anyone needed a mentor, 
go to Dr. Oakleaf. You know, I'm not even in her department. Like I have, like I am like literally in separate worlds, but she is one of my biggest mentors. And I know that I could come to her with any problem or any question and she would either find an answer or give me an answer. Reporting for Griffin Media, I'm Christian Sarno. Now on the student side, there's someone that found their passion when they were younger and they're sharing it with all of campus. Here we take an inside look at how music can build confidence and change your life. Treshawn Stepney has more. Freshman and nursing major Valerie Vang took home first place at the annual WAC Talent Show on March 6th with her surprising talent of rapping. Valerie speaks on how she found her craft. When Airplanes came out by B.O.B., Haley Williams, I think that's when I really liked rapping. I'm from Union Star, actually, about 35 minutes away from here, and rapping isn't really common. It's just a lot of country music. Probably 13 or 14 when I started like writing music, but I never really told anybody anybody about it. I just kind of practice a little bit behind closed doors. Although she has written lyrics for some time now, she has never stepped foot on a stage until the talent show. I've never really put myself out there and I have my sisters, but my sisters are my sisters, so they'll tell me I'm good or something. It's just really complicated, I guess. I'm just a really more reserved or shy person when it comes to stuff like that. Valerie shares her music mainly with her sisters, particularly her oldest one, Marina. I'm like the number one person she goes to. I put on Snapchat, Facebook, I try to put her out there. She doesn't like it, but I do it. The crowd hypes her up, it's lit and it's awesome, so I think that really helps her be more confident in herself. I decided to audition when I saw uh, a poster of it and I told my sister Marina about it and she told me that I should sign up for it, but I told her I didn't want to because it was really nerve-wracking and I've never been on stage before, but she kept pushing me. So that's why I ended up signing up for the talent show. After getting confidence to sign up, she shocked the Western Activities Council Chair of Entertainment, Narayan Reed Crawford, along with the rest of the council during her audition. When the song started, it started off like a melody, and I'm like, okay, so she's gonna start singing, but the beat dropped. So when the beat dropped, we was like caught off guard and then she started flowing and she has a great, 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 great voice for rapping. For the actual performance, she wasn't expecting the audience to be as engaged as they were. Multiple students pulled out their phones to record and cheer for her. They hyped me a lot. There were a lot of yeah, the audience was amazing, and I had like friends in the audience too who were hyping me up so that I had the confidence to keep going. She was carrying the beat instead of the beat carrying her, so it kind of made the crowd go out of control and just go crazy, and they were in love with her performance, and so they were, they were shocking. Valerie finds inspiration through her emotions. That's how she wrote the lyrics for Cry, the song that she performed at the talent show. It depends on how I feel. I can't just write music. I have to feel something. Things were going on, school was stressing me out, everything like that. So I wanted to, I was just feeling emotional during that time, so that's why I was crying, because I was crying during, during that time. Because of the unexpected interest from her audience, she is thinking about issuing her music through online platforms. Valerie's love of music is what keeps her motivated to pursue her lyrical craft. Music is life, I would say. It can help heal a lot of souls. And it's just really motivational, just depending on who you like, but music just to know it's Man, she sure seems avid about her love for rapping. I wish I could rap, but <laughs> I cannot. But I am passionate about my love for journalism. Well, someone else who's passionate is the Film Society. They hosted their annual event last month. Take a look at what reporter Chandra Traxler caught in the middle of the action. Having fun. We are having fun. The Griffin Film Society gathered together to use the things that they've learned in class and apply it to a film. So the film, it's called Stuck. It follows uh, two people who were previously in a relationship. And uh, we catch them at two different times, both going to the same vending machine. 
and uh, they are just dealing with some of the aftermath of a failed relationship, basically. Although everyone worked together on set, the story was the brainchild of screenwriter Joshua Benny. Yeah, I thought about this one. When it happened to my, me myself, I had a snack stuck in the vending machine and I tried multiple ways of trying to get it out and I went through a couple of emotions and it felt like I was more than one person at the moment. So uh, when they asked if the four script submissions, I started thinking and originally I wrote the script with plenty of people. But as we went through, I had two people help me. They uh, advised to the script and we narrowed it down to two people and, it, and we really helped develop the motions and transformed it into something beautiful. This student-led set was run primarily by freshmen, who were mentored by older members of the society. Photosynthesis. And basically, a part of the stuff that we started to do this year uh, is to actually get out and apply some of the things that we learn about in our classes and that we talk about. Um, and, and we do that by, by making films. And the film. This film set pushes students to do the job that they want to have in the future. The more experience, the better, and I think personally you should get as much experience as possible outside of the classroom because there's always going to be a level of seriousness that comes from like a, a, an impending grade or like you know a teacher kind of looking over your shoulder. But when you start to boost your level of quality outside of the classroom, that is more relational to how your job performance will actually be because there is no teacher looking over your shoulder in the real world. GFS meets every Friday at 6:30 in Potter 107. If you, any, anyone who is just interested in the field at all, I think GFS is a great place to start. You get to work with a lot of really great people and you get a lot of insight from upperclassmen and underclassmen. It's a nice community to have. So I would recommend it to anyone who's interested in film at all. Reporting for Griffin Media, I'm Shonda Traxler. Out of every four car accidents are caused by texting and driving. Wait, what did you just say? You heard me. That's better. Keep your eyes on the road. Hey, Morgan. Do you have a job? Well, with track, I don't here, but I do during the summer. You're about to graduate. Do you have anything set up? Actually, I do. But if I didn't, I could go to the Center for Franchise Development. What's that? Well, reporter Lance Lawton can explain it way better than I can. Check out what he had to say. Almost everyone in the St. Joseph area has heard the names Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory and Annie Ann's Pretzels. These stores can be found all over the United States. But who exactly runs these types of stores? The answer, Missouri Western alumni. Thanks to the Center for Franchise Development, Numerous Western students have been given the chance to own and manage their own business. Since 2009, there has been a contest every year between senior students who create their own business plans to present in front of a panel of judges. Director of the Center for Franchise Development, Pam Klaus, explains more about developing franchises. So franchise development really aligns more with our goal of um, not only setting these people up, um, young people up with their first business, but helping them develop their entrepreneurial journey maybe into that second or third franchise um, down the road. Um, the other piece of it is we want to be able to help businesses become franchises. Um, so we're really new in that um, area, but because we have been doing this, this is our 10 year anniversary, so we've been doing it for a while. So we have a pretty good handle on um, how franchises work, the value of being in a franchise, while the contest itself is a major step in a student's progress, Klaus believes that applied learning truly benefits Missouri Western. It really sets us apart. Um, it's unique. Um, it's an opportunity that most college graduates would not have. There are 29 stores operating under alumni in the United States, ranging from Mississippi to Utah to California, with cities sprinkled in between. A Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory store in Kansas City, Kansas, is managed by 2016 Western alum Kitty Para and her husband Giovanni. Kitty says that she is grateful for not only the opportunity to own her own business, 
but to come back to the St. Joseph area and help younger students understand more about the business world. And just giving back and giving my experiences, my knowledge to them, I enjoy so much because you know I get to see their young minds working and kind of coach them along the way um, and hopefully provide uh, some sort of value or an opportunity for them. Another Western alum manages a store just across the way at the East Hills Mall here in St. Joseph. Stephanie Tripp, another 2016 graduate, runs the Auntie Anne's pretzel store in the mall. Tripp says that she appreciates what Missouri Western did to help prepare her for her future in business. And then they have an internship where we actually go to a store and we live the life with that entrepreneur. You know, we get up at 5 a.m., we run to the bank, we do all the miscellaneous things that it takes to operate for a day. You know, it was the very hands-on, um, real-life scenario. With 10 years of experience already under its belt, the Center for Franchise Development is eager to continue helping business students get one step closer to owning their own franchises. Reporting for Griffin Media, this is Lance Lawton. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. Yeah, I really like meeting people and getting out there, so I think I'd like it too. Well, it's time for Bailey Sports Report after this message. Stay tuned. I've been where you fear to be. I've seen what you fear to see. I've done what you fear to do. All of these things I've done for you. I am the person you lean upon, the one you cast your scorn upon. And the one you bring your troubles to. All these people, I've been for you. All these people, I've been for you. All these people, I've been for you. All of these people, I've been for you. Welcome to the Griffin Update Sports Report, your place to catch up on all Griffin sports. I'm your host, Bailey Ketchum. First in sports, softball had a long weekend with double headers against Fort Hayes and Kearney. They swept both of the teams and traveled to Missouri Southern and Pitt State this weekend. In other sports news, baseball played a three-game series this weekend against Emporia State. They went one and two and returned home this weekend to face the rival Bearcats on Friday. Now it's time for our segment called Get to Know That Griff. I'm here with Western baseball player Brooks Day to get to know him a little bit. First off, can you tell me where you're from? Sacramento, California. Okay, California. What are some of your favorite things to do in California? Surf, go to In-N-Out, you know, just all the normal California things. Is In-N-Out really as good as people say? It's the best burger place in the nation. Really? I, see, I hear these like In-N-Out Whataburger comparisons and it's not even close. Anywhere in St. Joe compare? <laughs> Patties, I guess. Okay. That'll be the only one. All right. So when you were coming to a school in Missouri, what were some of your first thoughts? Thought it was gonna be cold all the time. I thought it was just gonna be snow on the ground, but um, it was a nice surprise. It was different than what I thought it was. And you experienced a lot of that snow and cold. Yeah. Like a month ago, honestly. It's just, it's not way nicer now. Okay. What are some of your favorite baseball memories at Western so far? Oh, I would have to say last week hitting that walk-off home run. But other than that, just playing in the conference tournament last year and kind of just building relationships with everybody on the team and the coaches. Okay, let's talk about that walk-off home run. What were you thinking when you were walking up to the plate? <laughs> well, I heard you in the stands kind of heckling me, and I was too locked in to respond or anything, but I was just looking for a good pitch to hit and hopefully put something in the gap, but fortunately it went over the fence. So You're right, I was heckling you. I wanted <laughs> I you guys to win that game, and you did. You did. So you have me to thank, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Other than baseball, did you play any other sports before college? Uh, I played basketball in high school, and that's about it. Okay, why'd you choose baseball? Too short for basketball. Okay, fair enough. If you could describe yourself in one word, what would it be? Chill. Chill, okay. Uh, I would agree. I'm a chiller. <laughs> Other than baseball, in your free time that you sometimes have, what's your favorite thing to do? Pretty much play Fortnite. Fortnite? Yeah. Are you really good? Oh, I'm really good. Like I'm the best. How good? 
Do you I mean, tape, do you if tape yourself like playing? there was somebody to compare myself to, I'd say I'm like Ninja. Okay. I'm up there. All right, we'll see. Maybe we can play against each other sometime. We can do a 1v1. All right, so <laughs> everyone on the team's got walk up <coughs> songs. What's your walk up song? It is Hank It by Justin Moore. Last okay. year I went with like an R&B Return of the Mac and try to change it up this year and go a little country. Hmm. Interesting. All right, if you were stuck on an island, what is one thing you would want with you? A boat. A boat. That is, that's smart. So then you yeah. wouldn't be stuck on an exactly, island. Exactly. I can that's leave. Just, all right. Okay. S baseball players are very superstitious. Are you superstitious before games? Oh, big time. What are some things you do? Well, I usually have the same breakfast on game day. I have like eggs, bacon, and a bagel. And then uh, I do the same thing before every at bat too, so. Have you never not been able to have that breakfast? Yeah, I used to have like Eggo waffles in high school. Oh, all right. That was about it. All right. Okay, has the superstitions been working out for you? How's baseball been so far this year? It's been a little, little rocky, a little shaky at times, but we're starting to turn it around and uh, hopefully we'll finish strong in this last half. Okay. What is your favorite series that you've played so far? Mm. Um, the, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have one yet. We haven't really played UCM or Northwest yet. We actually played them in a midweek, but okay. that's no fun. Nobody likes midweeks. And you play Northwest this weekend. That's here. right. We what can we expect to see against the Bearcats? Well, we definitely need everybody out there. We need the stands full. Um, should be three hard-fought games, and hopefully we come out on top. All right. Well, you guys heard it here first. Go out to the baseball games this weekend, and hopefully you'll see some Bearcats cry. It's been, <laughs> it's been great getting to know you, Brooks. For more updates on the weekend, women's tennis won Saturday against Lindenwood, but lost Sunday against SBU. Track and field competed in the SBU Invitational Saturday, Women placed 5th and men placed 8th, and men's golf finished 7th out of 18 in the NSIC Regional Preview. That's all we have for you today in sports. For more information on Griffin Athletics, check out gogriffins.com. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. You can watch our show on MWSU TV Channel 12. You can also catch us on the Griffin Update Vimeo and YouTube channels and the Missouri Western Student Media homepage. From all of us here at Griffin Update, thank you for watching.